barely see the mountains over there. Thick, thick smoke. Can't decide if I think it's getting thinner or not from Santa Fe. I guess it is. Santa Fe was pretty bad. Seems to be thinning as we go south. I am south of Albuquerque. These are big sand dunes. And this is the rest stop here. Good place to get out of the sun and have lunch if you've got snacks. There's my business partner over there next to his truck. We are headed south. Headed south through the smoke. Seems to be a little thinner here than it is in Santa Fe. And we're hoping it's gonna get even thinner as we keep driving south. We're going to get chili uh, in Hatch, New Mexico. We, um, we sell chili on our website, um, tomayochilibrothers.com. And so every now and then we go down to Hatch, especially right after the harvest and get a bunch of fresh hatch chili and bring it back to Santa Fe. So that's what we're doing. Well, we're stranded in the middle of the Brutal New Mexico desert. The transmission on the Ford just dropped out on us as we were climbing this hill and put our little journey on hiatus. So we've called AAA and we're just hanging out here in the shade of this mesquite bush and uh, waiting for Triple A to show up. I guess we're gonna try to go to Las Cruces and rent a car and get our chili and go back to Santa Fe. We'll just have to come back for his truck with my truck and tow it back. Who knows how long it's gonna take him to get here. It's usually less than an hour at least. They're probably at TRC. Minutes, 30 minutes. We got a little while to wait. At least we got shade. A little bit of a breeze. Trying to figure out what we're doing as far as getting our stuff in and the truck back. Um, we were looking for a rental car place, but there's not one in the city of Sydney. And of course I have to be back to Santa Fe for work on Monday, so that doesn't leave us a lot of time to get all this stuff done. <laughs> he missed the exit down there.
Where the U-Haul is? Uh, KFC doesn't? No, but we can look it up, I guess. Oh. You'd think he would know. I guess I should keep my jacket. Truck pulled up and was talking to him. Yeah, that was helpful. Yeah. guy pulled over just down this, the hill, that, and then when the sheriff left, he just didn't even stop. He's like, sorry about that. <laughs> Truth the consequences. To the UPS store. And uh it's over there. And Jason's seeing if he can get us a rental. The guy opened up for us. Alright, so the U-Haul guy says he doesn't have anything for us right now, but he will tomorrow at 2.30. Hopefully it does arrive tomorrow at 2.30. And uh, until then, we're going over to the Rocket Motel. We're going to hoof it over there. So this is our Truth or Consequences adventure here. Something cold to drink at the fast stop. it in so the rocket in was booked up but they called ahead for us to the uh, what did I say desert the desert star the desert star Inn, or something like that and they're waiting for us they said they have a room with two beds for us so we're in luck, but it's three blocks up here on the left, she said. Yep. Barbershop's closed up. All those businesses are closed up.
There's the desert view. Yeah, we did. And this is our room at the Desert View. Very pleasant little motel here in TRC. And the desert view has a pretty nice view. get a closer look at some of this art on the wall here. really special. Ooh, that's a good looking pizza. Sun is coming up over there. Birds are singing in the tree. Moon is going down over there. And it's a beautiful morning in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. And this is what it's like to wake up at the Desert View Motel. The Desert View is definitely highly recommended by me. Now we're gonna walk uh, down there and uh, hang out by the river until uh, we can go back to the U-Haul place and get the unit we're gonna need to tow Jason's truck back to Santa Fe. And then uh, hopefully we'll get back there before too late so I can make it to work in the morning. Well, this is good drama for my YouTube channel. <laughs> Ricky's Barber Shop. Right next to my little store. This town is just so kind of surreal.
And we found this nice little park. Looks like a dog park. By the pond, the, the little pond here. And uh, we're just going to hang out here until our U Haul is ready for us to pick it up. The ducks decided to set sail. Need a little landscaping here. These rocks are kind of uh, landscaped. Mmm, prickly pear. We have some prickly pear for lunch. I don't know what kind of tree that is. That's a mesquite bush. And these prickly pears are just ripe as can be and they look delicious. And in somebody's backyard. Isn't this cool? Oh wow, a cave. <laughs> Not much of a cave, but an overhang. Could be useful if you didn't know where the shelter was. Wow, some of these prickly pears just really look ripe. It's kind of dangerous to pick these up, but I'm going to. Oh, I know it's it's very ripe. They're a little overripe. <laughs> This is actually um, a really beautiful place where I'm at right now, this little dog park. And uh, it's kind of a pleasant place to hang out. Uh, oh, and there's all these prickly pears up here. I'm going to cut one or two of them up to eat and I will um, show you guys how we do that here for a little ways. There's a cat over here doing what to. Can you see him? Kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Ki. Meow. Meow. And there's Jason over there hanging out under the pavilion we found to hang out under. Don't think he's enjoying this as much as I am, but he's not complaining too much. Oh, and there's these ducks here in the pond, which are really beautiful little ducks. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's recording. So, okay, you guys, let's take a look. I'll, uh, I'll stay close to the camera so you can hear me. Anyway. These are prickly pears here. And they're all over the ground because they're falling off here because they're very ripe. And, uh... So I'm going to eat one, and I'll demonstrate to you how it's done, so you can find an ideal one. It's dangerous to touch these things. I almost always get hurt when I do, uh, but I'm going to take this one off. I got my Swiss Army knife, and we've got one right here. It's a small one, but it's perfectly ripe. It's ideal for eating. Well, let's just take it right here. I'll show you how we do it. First thing you got to do is get rid of these little teeny tiny spines that don't look like much, but if they get in you, they really can cause you a lot of misery. And uh, so the first thing I do is just cut all of those off. Just like that. Very carefully so I don't wind up with them in my fingers. And I almost always do. <laughs> Let's see here. Man. Yeah, that's pretty good. I've gotten most of the spines off of it, this side at least. And uh, I'll just go ahead and keep peeling it. Just like that. Kind of take the skin off. Helps to have a nice sharp knife for this. And uh, there we go. That's nicely skinned. Now the top part, I'm just going to kind of cut that off because it's a little chewy. And I'm left with this beautiful red, delicious, meaty fruit. With, it has some seeds inside of it, but uh, they're edible too. You just swallow them or whatever. And I eat them just like that. Mmm, that's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to spit the feeds out. Tastes a little like watermelon. And that's how you do it. If it doesn't like me. This camera's a little weird. Don't forget your phone and sanitizer. Glasses. Phone, sanitizer, shades. The club cafe, the club teen center, the club learning center. I guess this is where you come to get clubbed.
kind of interesting to me. Selling rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Not even pet rocks, just rocks. Just rocks. Not even geodes or anything. I saw some quartz, but it wasn't even really crystals. Let's look in the window. Telephone. Wow. It looks like there's a lot of really cool stuff in there. I like the DC telephone. The D beta. Like thrift store after thrift store after thrift store. Some a bit more high class than others. Yeah. Some cool ashtrays. Yeah. Old 60s glass. been a pretty nice day here in Truth or Consequences uh, and we're at the U-Haul place and apparently the bad news is the uh, the unit that uh, they were going to have for us is not going to work but they have this bigger unit that should work. So Jason's in the U-Haul place right now trying to get that straightened out and then we should be on our way back to Santa Fe. <laughs> It's been a rough day, I have to say. <clears throat> managed to get a U-Haul but we're not towing Jason's truck back with it. They didn't have a harness that was suitable. $300 for the truck. $300 but uh, 
it's air conditioned and it's very comfortable so uh, uh, we're on our way back to Santa Fe now all right well there's where we came from pretty smoky and smoggy looking but still not nearly as bad as yeah and not as bad as what we're going into which is going to be even smoggier and smokier oh, well, this is a pretty interesting rest stop the Akamiya rest stop They have these nice little places for you to picnic. And it says, A Camino Real wound its way below the black basaltic buttes of San Acacia seen to the southeast, named Acomia or Acomita, Little Acoma by the Spanish. These buttes form the walls of a narrow passage for the Rio Grande along which hostile Apache frequently waited in ambush. Travelers had to organize into well-armed caravans to assure their safety along this section of the Camino Real. Decided to climb up on the roof over there. Don't jump! Don't jump! You're young! It's not worth it. All right, and uh, we're at the rest stop just outside of Santa Fe. Looks like we made it back. There's Santa Fe over there. And uh, it's pretty smoky up here still. It's pretty bad, pretty thick. But, at least we made it back in this big old U-Haul. Cost us a lot. But, uh, I figure I get to sleep in my own bed tonight and I'll make it to work in the morning.